All right, my name is Clark Cheech Pierce, and I'm going to tie the Grumpy Frumpy. Um, the Grumpy Frumpy is kind of an invention that I've come up with over the last you know, three or four years. It's, it's got an interesting story of how it evolved. Um, but I'm a big fan of uh, substituting synthetics for naturals, natural materials, and this fly is kind of the epitome of that. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of explain the whole evolution of the fly as I, as I tie it. Um, I'm using a size 8 hook on this one, but you can tie this anywhere from a size, this is probably as big as I'll tie it, but all the way down to in the 20s in midge colors. Um, but anyway, the hook that I'm using right now is a Gamakatsu S10, and it's kind of, it's about a 2x long dry fly hook. Um, and so I'm going to just start by attaching thread right in the middle of the hook. And uh, I always just break my thread off. It saves me a trip to grab the scissors. I tried tying with scissors in hand and I ended up almost poking my eye out on several occasions, so I don't do that. Anyway, uh, the tail for this fly is a fly tires dungeon material. It's called shuck yarn. And it's very similar to Zelon. And it comes kind of all crinkled up like this sometimes. So I'll get a strand out and I'll lightly pull on it and it, it straightens the fibers a little bit. So I'll take just a strand of this. I'll attach it at my tie-in point and just tie back to the back of the hook. And I'm going to trim the tail so that it is approximately as long as the shank of the hook. All right. All right. Um, now I'm going to tie in the foam for the hump on this fly. Because originally I kind of wanted a kind of like the uh, Royal Wolf Cripple, but I wanted to do a humpy version of it. And I think everybody in the whole world's tied a foam humpy before. And so I started out by, you know, attaching the the foam right at my tie-in point again and wrapping the foam back to the tail and it's really important that you you tie this foam in really really tightly because if you don't it will spin okay so I'm I'm building the base of a typical foam humpy um, my favorite color of humpy is a yellow humpy so I'm going to use some yellow four strand rayon just tie it in right at the front of the foam right at the tie in point and with this with this floss I, I kind of want to build it up so it's a little bit fatter and so in order to do that I'm going to wrap from the front all the way to the back and then back up to the front and so wrapping all four fibers at the same time I'll wrap all the way back and then all the way back to the front and then tie it off okay then I'm gonna pull the hump over and this foam that I'm using for the hump is I mean it, it it's a it's a great foam. It's called Rainey's Evazote foam, and this is the eighth inch style. Um, I think yeah, it's called Camel. I think that's the color that, that I'm using right now. So after the foam is tied in, again several wraps to secure the foam. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to come in to the head of the fly and cut it off at an angle. And the reason for that is so when I tie it down, there's a little bit of a, a let or there's a little bit of a slope all the way to the eye of the hook. So I'm going to tie this in. Now you might recognize that there are no there aren't split wings on this fly. There are no wings on this fly yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take white polypropylene yarn and I'm going to tie it going straight out the front of the hook, cripple style. So it's going to go out the front of the hook, 
and I'm going to wrap that all the way back to where our body starts. And then instead of trimming it flush with where my thread is, I'm going to leave a little bit of a tag end. I don't even know why I do that. I just tie it that way. There's really no real reason. Okay, so in my struggle to find really good dry fly hackle that's size 8 or 10, I just kind of settled with using whiting euro hackle. And instead of using just one hackle, I use two, and it makes a really nice bushy looking dry fly. So I'm going to tie these hackles in on the opposite side of the fly with the, fl with the uh, shiny side facing out. And the reason for that is when I start wrapping the fly, um, the shiny side will face forward. Okay, so I have both of those tied in. Advance my thread to the eye of the hook. And taking both hackle fibers at the same time, I'm going to make sure this one's not going to twist on me. I am taking these hackle fibers and I'm wrapping them both at the same time. All the way to the eye of the hook and I'm going to make one wrap or a couple wraps to tie those off. Trim the hackle off. Now a lot of guys will think, well, you're going to crowd the eye of your hook now if you, if you do it that way. What I do is I just grab everything and pull it back and make several thread wraps right in front of this wing. And what that does is it makes it shoot up to about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to whip finish it. Now this was the original foam humpy cripple thing that I came up with and I thought I had a really killer fly. But then I, I got thinking of you know how I like to fish the royal wolf and one key component to the royal wolf is the red band. And so I had a bunch of these sitting on my desk and I ended up going back downstairs one night. I think it was like 3 in the morning. I think I had a dream about it or something. But I went downstairs and I put the, the flies back in my vise and I ended up reattaching the thread just like this and creating red bands in all my flies. And so what that does is it kind of makes a kind of a buggy segmented profile on top of the hook. And on the bottom, you see the red band showing through. Okay, so I, at that point, I whip finished it again, and I thought I had a killer fly until about a week later, I had an idea to throw some rubber legs on this. And so um, the first original fly has fine, round rubber, and I, I usually put white on. And I've kind of moved toward the Spanflex type material. Again, this is um, this is uh, Fly Tires Dungeon uh, material, and I think it's called Baby Legs Alive, something like that. It's just the the I think it's the neck. It's not the smallest size that they make, but it's the the next size up. So I'm just going to cut off one strand, and I'm going to take this this rubber leg kind of a, a piece about this long and I'm going to pin that against the the back side of my fly. I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap that rubber leg right in the middle of the red band that I've made. And if you need to you can adjust where it where it sits. Um, then I'm going to loop it around the front of the fly and do the same thing on the back side of the fly. And after I've done that you can take this loop that you made and push it back behind the fly so that you can whip finish in front of the rubber legs. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it's worth it. So I've whip finished the fly. Now I'm going to take that loop and just cut the loop. And now we have two legs coming out of each side of the fly. Now. I always mark the rubber legs that I put on my flies and I don't really like the selection I can get in the, the stores. And so um, I'm going to take two Sharpies, a red and a black Sharpie, and I'm going to custom make some barred rubber legs. And the way that I do that is I will take the rubber legs, 
and it helps to have a rotary vise during this part as well but pull the rubber legs tight and just mark the rubber legs like this and I leave enough room if I'm doing two colors I leave enough room between the the bar so I can come back in with the, the second color So when we release it, the rubber legs kind of look like that. Okay, I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. If you're using the round rubber legs, you can just mark one side and the rubber legs will actually roll so that you can mark the top and the bottom without having to mark the other side. and release. Now the, the last thing that's, that's left is just to trim the rubber legs and what I do is I usually take my scissors and go right along the edge of the hackle and trim the legs about equal to the length that the hackle sticks out from the side of the fly. So from a top view the fly looks like that. But anyway it's a, it's a very effective fly fished um, just kind of as an attractor pattern anytime you throw like a royal wolf or a humpy this fly seems to really do the trick uh, the other thing is because it's synthetic um, there are a lot of different color options that you can do uh, this is the number one color that I use uh, the second most popular color that I like to use is a, a lime colored fly it's got a red band with lime floss lime green floss and then the, the hackle has one brown and one grizzly hackle. All right.